menu, I find some Spanish inspiration in the tropical north. Look at that. It's amazing, isn't it? It truly is magical. Dive into dessert on Whitehaven Beach. Oh, look at that. Visit the doctor, Dr Rum in Ely Beach. I want to do that. And I get inspired by the day's catch in Burley. Balmain bugs have that sweet, delicate flavour. On Tropical Gourmet, Queensland. In the late 1920s, a Spanish immigrant, Juan Paranella, stood on the banks of the Mina Creek Falls, just as I am here, and knew that this was the perfect spot to build his dream. And here, nestled amongst the lush tropical landscape, you'll find his amazing vision. And it is as inspiring as it is unexpected. So the, uh, the thing was that the, the park had sort of real character and, and looked good, but we didn't realise the story. Yeah. And uh, that story we now have been able to bring to life. Wow. And, uh, and look at that. It's amazing, isn't it? It truly is magical. So this is wow. the, uh, the stunning piece. That is incredible. It's so, like a magical manor house. It <laughs> is. It is. It's stunning. What we found was this, this building had that real element of surprise. Mm. A lot of locals didn't even know this existed. We're an hour and a half away from Cairns. Uh, I feel like I'm in, in the middle of nowhere, but all of a sudden there's this magical playground and this beautiful house. Well, there's no doubt Jose was trying to create something really special. It looks very Spanish inspired. Is it a Spanish family that owned this? Yeah, look, Jose was from Barcelona mm -hmm. and uh, he took a lot of his inspiration from Barcelona and brought it here to North mm -hmm. Queensland. When he and his wife came out here, I have no doubt that part of the story is their love story yeah. and him wanting to create something special for her. But what he created, in fact, was a, a romantic place for locals. Mm. And many of the locals met their partners here at dances and yeah. had their wedding reception here, played tennis here. So it, it played a big part in the social fabric of the area. Totally different <laughs> till today, but yeah. in the 1930s and 40s, this was a, the central piece. It's a tropical paradise for sure. It's beautiful. Look at the Spanish twist. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I can almost imagine myself here in the 1930s playing a little bit of tennis, maybe going in for a freshly squeezed lemonade. It's absolutely breathtaking. I can't wait to do a bit of cooking here. Oh, you, you'll enjoy cooking here, and I think Jose will be pleased that uh, you've come here too. Now, I thought it would only be appropriate to do a beautiful Spanish dish, a paella. Now, first of all, you need a paella dish just like this. If you can't find one, you can absolutely use a large, wide pan. And now, I want to toast some saffron. Saffron is a key ingredient when making paella. Saffron is quite expensive, so you don't want to overuse it, just a small pinch. By toasting it, we're going to get lots of flavour out of it and then place it in the pan for about 10 seconds on each side. Then I'm going to place it in some chicken stock. Now, while that's happening on one side of the pan, I'm just going to add a little bit of olive oil to the other side and start cooking our chicken. Now, this is a paella that has a combination of chicken, a beautiful array of seafood, prawns, mussels, some local squid and some chorizo sausage. This is just chicken wings that I've cut into drumettes. So you can see that when you put those two little bits together, that's the chicken wing. So much flavour in this, so in it goes. And we want to seal this off so it gets a really good colour because it's going to give so much flavour to our paella. Now that's been in the pan long enough, so we'll take the saffron out. We'll unwrap it from its little foil pockets and then I'll place it straight in to our chicken stock. Now use really good quality chicken stock for this. We'll just mix it around. It's also going to give our paella a beautiful colour. Let's have a look at our chicken now. We'll turn it over. Fantastic. We're getting some nice colour on these little drumettes. Now while that's cooking, we can prepare our chorizo sausage. This is gorgeous local chorizo sausage that I'm going to chop up nice thin rounds you can see throughout the chorizo sausage that there's a little bit of fat. That fat is going to give this paella a gorgeous flavour. So I want to render that out. So this is going to go in the pan next. Okay. And then we'll just scatter that around the chicken. Once I get some really good colour on the chorizo sausage and the chicken, I'm going to remove it and then start cooking the sofrito, which is a combination of onion, garlic and capsicum. I'm going to cook it for at least 8 to 10 minutes or until it's really soft and jammy. Sofrito 
is looking fantastic. I've added the tomatoes and everything has softened and become a little bit jammy-like. And now we can add the calamari. Now have a look how gorgeous. These are nice, small little local calamari from Queensland. I'm gonna use the hoods and the tentacles. Now there's two ways of cooking the calamari. You can either add it to the top at the very last minute and just let the heat penetrate through the meat or do as I'm doing and cook it really slowly. This means that this is going to become really soft, almost like butter when it's cooked with the rice. I love to add it at this stage because it gives the rice another level of flavour. So the last little hood, gorgeous little ones, which means they're going to be extra tender. And then these little tentacles, we'll just cut them in half. And now we'll add that to our sofrito along with the chicken and the chorizo and any of those juices, make sure you add them. And we'll give that a good stir, coating everything in that delicious sofrito. Oh, smells so good. Now we need a good amount of smoked paprika. So we'll add that to the dish. And you do want to toast this off for a few minutes, getting some heat throughout that spice. Once it starts to become really aromatic, we know we're ready for the next stage. What happens is the heat's not going to be even for a really large pan like this. So make sure coating everything and then turning a little bit so we get a nice even heat throughout the chicken and the seafood there. All right, now it's time for some herbs. I love the addition of some rosemary. Smells fantastic, three sprigs and a few bay leaf. Now for the stock that's been infusing with the saffron, we'll pour that in. Look at that colour, it's golden. And you want it to cover all of the meat and the calamari. Again, giving it a mix. Now for the rice. This is bomba rice, which comes from the Calaspara region in Spain. This rice is a short grain rice, and this is the rice you want to use for a paella. You don't want to use a long grain rice like basmati or jasmine. Once this comes to the boil, I'm going to rain in the rice, give it a quick shake, and that's the last time I'm going to stir it. What's going to happen is it's going to cook very gently and slowly absorb the liquid and then form a nice crust on the bottom. That crust is what makes a paella so unique. We'll turn it down, cook it for about 10 to 15 minutes and then I'm going to add the rest of the seafood to the top. This paella is looking fantastic. You can see that the rice has absorbed most of the liquid and now we can start adding our seafood. So I like to start with the mussels and it's all about the decoration. This is a party, this is a sharing dish. So just spread them out in a circular pattern. And then I'm going to add the prawns and allow this to cook for a further five to eight minutes. Now you know that this is ready when you start to hear a little bit of a sizzle and that means that the sokra is forming, which is the crust on the base of the paella. This looks fantastic. These mussels have opened up, the prawns are cooked, and all of the liquid has been absorbed by the rice, so the heat can go off. I like to rest it just before serving it, and it's crucial to add a little bit of lemon. But not everyone likes lemon on their paella, so don't put it all over it. Just cut some wedges and then garnish it over the top. Paella is one of those dishes I always turn to for a big group of people. It's theatrical so everyone can stand around and watch it being made and it's a one pan wonder. This is a beautiful Spanish dish in this gorgeous Spanish inspired Paranella Park.